All right, guys, welcome to the lecture on empirical formulas. So today we're going to talk about how to determine an empirical formula when you're given um, data that you, you have to percent by mass. So you usually get this back as grams or percent by mass uh, when you send a compound out for elemental analysis. And you can determine the empirical formula based on what's given back to you. Now, empirical formulas are the simplest formula you can get for a compound in terms of the whole ratio numbers. So if I, for instance, had C6H12O6, that would reduce down to CH2O, because the 6s would cancel down to 1, and the 12 on the H would cancel down to 2. So CH2O would be the empirical formula for regular glucose, which would be a sugar. So you can see here how to determine an empirical formula. There's a couple of steps you want to follow. So in step one, you're going to convert all percent mass into grams if you're given a percent mass. Now, I put that in parentheses because sometimes you're actually given the grams to start out with, and you don't need to do this conversion over into grams. You just take the grams and you start with step two. If you are given the percent mass, you need to assume that you have a 100 gram sample when you're doing this because your percent will add up to 100 and so you assume you have a 100 gram sample and you'll convert each of those percents over into respective amounts of grams for the 100 gram sample. Step two, you need to convert all your grams of each individual element in the makeup over to moles and that's something you should be comfortable with doing. Uh, we convert back and forth into moles all the time in chemistry. Divide through each element's moles by the lowest value of moles present. So what I mean by that is once we find the moles of every element present, for instance, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, you're going to find out of those which one offers the lowest amount of moles, and you'll divide each number of moles for each element through by that lowest number. Once you've done that, you may be finished or you may not. So step four, it says use the lowest common multiple in parentheses. It says if needed to obtain whole ratio numbers. Now the reason I put if needed is that you may get whole ratio numbers once you divide through. And if that's the case, you're ready to move on to step five and propose the empirical formula. If not, for instance, if I get 2.5 moles of carbon, I can't create a formula that says C 2.5 and then continue. The C has to be a whole number. That's the laws of multiple proportions and definite proportions. We need to make sure that we have whole ratioed numbers when we're dealing with these makeups. So then finally, if you needed to do that, you'd multiply through it and then you impose the empirical formula. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through an example. Those are the general rules. And the example that I want to use is um, absorbic acid, which is vitamin C. So let's go ahead. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write down, so give me a second, I'm going to write down the percent makeup of vitamin C by mass for each of the elements involved. Carbon is reported at 40.5% and then hydrogen is reported to be at 4.58%. And then we have oxygen as the final element for vitamin C, and it is reported at 54.50%. Now, each of these percents are by mass. So what this is saying is that if I had a 100-gram sample, 40.92 grams of it would be carbon, 4.58 would be hydrogen, and so on. So the first step is simply to drop the percents, assuming that we have 100 grams of this sample, and we'll just say that's how many grams of each of these we have. So I'm saying I have 40.92 grams of carbon, 4.58 grams of hydrogen, and 54.50 grams of oxygen. So once I have the grams, the next step, if you go and you look, step two, all right, so let's go back for a second. Step two, we just did step one. 
we assumed 100 grams and we converted the um, percent mass into grams. Step two is to convert all the grams of elements into moles. So if I come over here and I start, I'm going to take my carbon first. So carbon was 40.92. I'll go ahead and I'll set that up. Now that's grams of carbon that I have up there. And I know that every one mole of carbon from the periodic table is about 12.01 grams. Again, that comes off the periodic table. So the value that I would get for that is 3.41. And you can check that in a calculator as you continue to go along here. So let's do hydrogen and oxygen as well. Hydrogen, we had 4.58 grams. If I convert hydrogen, I'm going to have one mole of hydrogen at one point, sorry, that point's a little messy, 1.01 grams, again, from the periodic table. And if I put that, I get 4.54 is what this would come out to. Now, each of these are moles. So this is moles of carbon. This is moles of hydrogen. I come down here, I do my oxygen. I'm going to get, we had 54.50 grams. That came from the percent by mass. We assumed 100 grams. And I have one mole of oxygen. And the oxygen is 16.00, approximately, from the periodic table. And when I get that, I get 3.41 moles. So, if you remember, now that we have this done, the next step, if we go back and we look, step three, we've converted them all to moles. We're going to divide through each element's mole by the lowest value of moles present. So, if we go back and we look at the lowest value of moles present, I have 3.41, 4.54, and 3.41. So, 3.41 would be tied between oxygen and carbon for the lowest moles present. So what we'll do is we'll take carbon and we'll say 3.41 divided by 3.41. That's going to give us 1 when we do that. The hydrogen is going to be, what did we have for that? 4.54. And we'll divide that by 3.41. And if you plug that into your calculator, you should end up getting, let me see here, 1.33. And then the oxygen we said was the same. That was 3.41. If I divide 3.41, that's going to come out to 1. So that's the next step. We have these numbers here. If these were all whole ratio numbers, we could stop at this point. However, they're not because 1.33 is not a whole ratio number. That's got a decimal. It's a fraction number if we converted it into a fraction. So what we need to do is find the lowest common multiple. So again, I'm going back here. Use the lowest common multiple for step four, if needed, which we do for that 1.33, to obtain the whole ratio numbers, and then we'll propose the empirical formula. So, right here, the question is, what would we multiply by? So, 0.33 is a common multiple of three. So, if I multiply by three, that would take care of the 0.33 and turn this entire grouping here into... Four. So if I took 1.33 and I times it by 3, I would get 4. So if I do that to the hydrogen, I have to do it to the rest of them. So I'm going to times this one by 3. I'll times the 1.33 by 3, and then I'll times this one by 3. So what I get is my whole ratio of numbers, and I can write out my empirical formula at this point. And my empirical formula turns out to be C3 H. 4, O, 3, all right? Now, if I wanted to determine the molecular formula, this is the empirical formula that I have here, I would need two things. I would need the molecular weight of the empirical formula, and then I would need the true molecular weight for the molecular formula, so the, the molecular weight of absorbic acid I would need in order to find the uh, molecular formula of absorbic acid. 
So let's do that really quick. If we want to find this, we'll take the empirical formula and we're gonna find what its molecular weight is. So I've got three carbons, three times 12.01 plus my hydrogens, four times 1.01 plus my oxygens, three times 16.00. So if I sum all of those together, I should get the empirical formula's molecular weight. And when I do that, it comes out to 88. So this would be, this formula right here, would be 88 grams per mole. Because these values, the 12.01, the 1.01, and the 16.00, those come from the periodic table. And that's in grams per mole. So we have that it's 88 grams per mole. So the other thing I would have to give you when we're doing this is I would have to tell you what the actual molecular weight for the molecular formula is for absorbic acid. And I have that here. It's 176 grams per mole. Now remember, what we had was 88 for the empirical formula, grams per mole. So again, this is always going to have to be given to you. Somebody would have to come and say, this is the true molecular weight for the, the molecular formula, and then you'll need to calculate your empirical formula weight, which we calculated as 88. If you divide these two, you should always get some sort of a whole ratioed number. In this case, it comes out to two. Whatever that number is, you're going to go through and multiply the empirical formula by that number, and that will give you the molecular formula. So, if I have C3H4O3, and I'm going to multiply that by 2, then I end up with C6H8O6. This would be my molecular formula. While the other one over here in parentheses is the empirical formula. So I hope you guys found that helpful. That's how you determine an empirical formula and a molecular formula. Remember, for the molecular, you need to be given the molar mass of the molecular formula. And then you can predict it based on your empirical formula. Um, keep in mind all of those rules. If you start with grams instead of percent mass, you just go right over into converting into moles. You don't need to assume the 100 gram sample. So I hope that this uh, video lecture was helpful. Please make sure to thumbs up the video, leave comments if it was helpful, and make sure to subscribe for others. Thanks, guys.